This is the Go Radio Football Show. Listen anytime, wherever you get your podcasts. Call 0808 17 17 700. Let's go! Well, what a weekend. Celtic surrender a two-goal lead to draw 2-2 with the top of the table. Aberdeen both losing points for the first time this season. It's a 24 hours Rangers. Over to them to narrow the gap at the top of the table but they couldn't take advantage you know the story they lost 1-0 a late goal at Kilmarnock Mark Guidi is here 08-08-17-17-700 and the Rangers legend Barry Ferguson Barry what's gone wrong what did you make of it yesterday afternoon a defeat against Kilmarnock um, a very disappointing performance Paul um, that's that's the way I, I can put it across after what happened at the game against um, Celtic and Aberdeen it was a best possible result for Rangers and then you're thinking into the game against Kilmarnock um, which you know is going to be difficult because it's always difficult down at Rugby Park just um, very poor a real lack of quality it was a scrappy game but Paul these are the games when you have the opportunity to claw back points you have to win and um, I've got to be honest with you I thought Kilmarnock deserved the three points Who's to blame at your old club? What did you feel watching it from the top down? What do you feel on the pitch? The manager, yeah, everyone's just, getting it. Just not now. good enough, yeah. Paul. That's it's plain and simple. Um, the, as I said, a, a lack of quality. Certainly in the final third, I, I just thought that they never get a grip of the game. It was really pedestrian at times on the ball, uh, pretty slow. And it's not what I imagined. Imagined that it would be Paul. I thought Rangers would have had. Um, uh, something about them because obviously what I mentioned with the result that happened in, in Saturday afternoon at, at Celtic Park and um, uh, yeah I was pretty shocked if I'm being honest with, uh, with you Mark Goody what did you feel about Rangers yesterday after the Celtic result 24 hours earlier? Yeah I mean I remember doing the predictions in here on Friday night Paul and you know uh, I thought Rangers would win uh, and I said that, and if you are going to have any aspirations to be champions you need to go to places like Rugby Park and when, you know you need to go and do it in tough grounds and tough situations and as Barry said Rangers are, are, are handed a, if they, they should they need one but they're handed a great G up at 5 o'clock on, on, on Saturday night after Aberdeen's uh, brilliant result against Celtic and they just flop they fail to a man I don't know if you'd give anybody pass marks I mean to see a Rangers team perform that way um, no cohesion no leadership lack of fight wasteful in front of goal shocking defending absolutely shocking defending at the back across the board and a, and a clear out needs to start Paul I think we've all, we've all known that and um, they, they need to really be ruthless if Rangers are to move forward they need to be ruthless and they need to spend their money more wisely we all know there's cutbacks John Bennett's announced that um, but they've still got a right good budget they've still got a right good budget but they are not getting value for money their recruitment uh really open to question yeah, and you can go into other details in, in terms of you're playing on an artificial surface yeah. there's a bit of wind blowing but you can't use that as an excuse Paul you, you can't um, after Celtic and Aberdeen dropping two points uh, you, you have to go to places like that and um, and get the three points they never even really peppered <laughs> Kilmarnock's um box in terms of creating a lot of a lot of chances and, and that was the biggest disappointment uh, for me sitting watching it just really really disappointed in the the overall performance um, there was a, a, a lack of quality throughout the game and you can maybe put that down to it's no ideal conditions but you you need more you, I need to see more let's go on the lines 0808 17 17 700 first up is Derek is on the line a big Rangers fan hi Derek Paul, hi Paul. How are you doing, hey, Derek? Uh, uh, Barry, this clearly isn't working with the manager. Uh, if he's any dignity, he resigns, but he won't. He should be sacked. It's not working. Rangers haven't performed in any games this season. The performances we're watching is absolutely dreadful. One away goal all season against mediocre opposition. Rangers should be steamrolling the teams like Kermanok. There's not one game this season that you could go and say, I thought I enjoyed that. Rangers were outstanding. The, 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 his recruitment has been absolutely dreadful and it, it's time to get rid of him the, the, it's clearly not working I would go for Derek McInnes tonight the, the, he's no identity there's no leadership in the team there's no flair in the team it's hitting hope 
they're no organisation uh, if it wasn't for Kilmarnock's bad judgement yesterday and bad misses that would have been a four or five one shot yesterday Barry, what would you say to Derek and thousands of Rangers fans? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't blame the Rangers fans after it been been angry and, and frustrated because that was an opportunity to claw back points, mm-hmm. Paul. And and let, there's a wee bit of pressure that goes on you, but you've got to handle that. You've got to handle that pressure. You know what you're going into. There's no surprises going into that game um, against Kilmarnock. I know some players haven't played down there before, but as a team, mate, I'm telling them what to expect. What they're going into They're going into Against a very well organised Team A very physical team You're going to play in An artificial surface You need to deal with These situations And um, Rangers didn't Deal with the situations At all yesterday Hence the reason why Kilmarnock came out With the three points And I, I can't sit here And argue that Kilmarnock didn't deserve it They did deserve The three points Mark you And saw that kills it. me yeah. to say it Yeah mm. But it was evident what happens? Philip Clement, just a year into the job, he got a new contract mm. two months ago, so it's a yeah. new extension, what, three years or so. What, what would you say to Derek? Four-year deal. Hey, well, I would say under normal circumstances, uh, Philippe Clement could be looking at the sack. But these are not normal times at Rangers just now, Paul. Um, and two reasons I would say that. A, there's not a proper structure at the club just now. John Gilligan is interim chairman and that, that's certainly fine I don't I don't have a problem with that at all with John I know he's got Rangers best interest mm. at heart but does he have the authority to go and sanction mm. the sacking of a manager a hefty payoff no doubt um, and then to go and you know is he then allowed to go and choose a successor or do you need to wait to the new chairman's in the new CEO is in John Bennett stepped down but is John De- Bennett still involved in the decision making process at the club I don't know um, and there's also as well the reason I think that uh, Philippe Clement was given an extension because the week before it John Bennett came out and said we're losing 10 and a half million a year this can't continue mm-hmm. we are having, having to downsize we're going to have to lower our wage bill da 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 and look at a different uh, process for recruitment the manager's buying into it there's a new contract for the manager now that suggests to me that they are willing to let this bit of pain happen uh, under Philippe Clement because you sack Philippe Clement you bring in Derek McInnes as um, as uh, Derek suggested there don't have a problem it's a, it's a right good shoot but it's not like they're keeping 25 million quid yeah. back for a new manager it's not like he's going to get be allowed to go and bring in half a dozen players on 40 grand a week you're still working under the same restraints so it's about getting more out of what you have at your disposal so right now um, I would say yeah he may well be sacked but I don't think he will be. I think, I think you've got to ride it with him, Paul. Derek, you are trying to come back in there? Mark, what restraints? What are you talking about restraints? He spent £14 million in duffels. What restraints are you talking about? The same restraints as Kamala's got, St. Johnson's got, what's yeah. he's got? Yeah, I, I get it. It's a rubbish, £14 million in duffels. See, since Van Bronckhurst has been the Rangers manager, how much money has been squandered at that club? Right, absolute dreadful recruitment. Mm. Big man, how many games has he played in three seasons? Yeah. Do you know they're sitting still that wage? Yeah, Which but Derek, the you're, the you're right. Derek, I, I hear you, and I said it. I said it at top of the program. I said, I said it at top of the program. They need to get better value out of what they what they have. And I get you. You're, you're angry. You're you're frustrated. Uh, I get all that. Um, and they should be getting more out of what they have, and they should be getting more out of their manager. I mean, I think their manager started really, really well, but there's now see this question marks if Philippe Clement is the right man to lead Rangers. But what I'm saying is, Paul, right now, these are not normal circumstances yeah. at Rangers. They do not have a proper structure at the yeah. football club to go and make, I don't think, and I might be wrong, John Gilligan might have the authority to go and do what he likes tomorrow morning and sack Philippe Clement. I don't know, but I suspect that they don't. I think they need to wait to get everybody in place, then assess it and see how best they move forward. And it is the second biggest budget. And I guess for Derek distance, and the Rangers yeah. fans, I get, I get it. It was 18 to 20 million the summer before. Summer of 23, wasn't it? Under Michael Beale. He was given carte blanche. Everyone thought oh, it's going to be great. It didn't work out. A year ago, there, there has been money. There, there yeah. has been money made available. And there's, there's even when they were trying to cut the, the budget, mm. obviously during the summer, we're letting players like Lundstrom and Goldston, etc., who were the higher earners, they have reduced that by bringing in players like Proper. And, uh, to come in for obviously goals and Baron the same way with, with Lindstrom but they have the manager has been given money to go and spend is there any more players? the players Igamani yep. 
two million pound uh, by Rami three million um, I, I, I could go on Yefty I think it was a million pound or, I wrote just over a million pound so there, there has been money made available but, but what I'm, I'm saying is I'm watching that game yesterday I understand as a manager the responsibility lies in his shoulders but the players have to take responsibility mm-hmm. as well when you cross that white line you've got to put in performances it may be no be great to watch but you need to find a way to win games of football and could you see that yesterday? no I, I, I couldn't that that was the thing that was hurting me yesterday um, the, the realisation that you can claw back I know it's early doors we're going into the third week of October I get that but you're still clawing back two points you're still th- Barry, that Barry. opportunity was there for yeah. Rangers yesterday and they didn't take the opportunity yeah, sure. because the performance was nowhere near good enough and there's been a pattern of that there has been under Philippe Clement. I mean, he did really well initially. Yep. They were getting close to Celtic and then they faltered at the key time. Derek, uh-huh. you're back on. Uh, Paul, you could be either nine points behind Aberdeen and Saturday yeah. night or fourth in the league and two points behind on your eight at eight o'clock on Saturday night. Mm-hmm. That'll be one of the out there. will be either one or the other. And that's just not acceptable. Yeah. Come next, uh, I think uh, Michael Beale's last game against Charlie Aberdeen. Yes. Don't be surprised if it's for Clement's last game because fans won't watch this. I know that Martin's been really saying about the board. Mm. Fans will decide who's the Rangers manager, not the Rangers board. Because if fans start going with their feet, Mark, then I see a fair problem in their hands. Yeah, no, D- Derek, like you're saying, I, I don't disagree with what you're saying. I'm just saying that it's, it's a wee bit different um, at the moment. But to get back to the team on the park, yeah. um, I think now you can see. And Barry highlighted it in, in the summer towards the end of the transfer window. Connor Barron and Mo Diamandi mm-hmm. in the middle of the pitch is the heartbeat of your team. Two good players, but two kids. Yeah. Essentially, in footballing terms, two kids. And you can see that. Not good enough to carry that team week in, week out. You know, and for to, you know that and, and I said this as well, for me I couldn't understand the logic. And this is where I, I put it all on Philippe Clement. I couldn't understand the, the the logic of spending three million quid or, or more on Berami as a winger, and then you don't buy a central midfielder with experience, mm. and then a week after you spend that money in Berami, you bring Hadji back into the fold. Mm. So where's the, where's the forward thinking? Where's the joining the the dots between all the departments in the football mm. club? To me, that that's lacking there as well at the moment. But on the park, Paul, I have to be honest sit beside the guy who won about 15 trophies with Rangers I know we can't keep hearting back to how it was 25 years ago but really most of those players let's be honest and don't know if Derek agrees most of those players that are playing for Rangers right now under normal circumstances wouldn't be anywhere near a Rangers jersey let's be brutally honest about it Derek that's about the manager then Mark manager and and recruitment department yeah manager and recruitment department yep Derek, thanks for your call. It, it, it is a key yeah. position, and, and I do look at young Connor and I do look at Deal Mandy, and you can throw Raskin into the equation mm-hmm. as well, who's a, yeah. a young midfielder. I, I, I said it when the window was still open, even before the season uh, had started. Mm-hmm. It was an area of the pitch after losing the experience to Lundstrom. Now, I know Lundstrom wasn't everybody's cup of tea, but he's 30 31, he had a good bit of experience. He was a leader on the pitch. He would communicate on the pitch. Mm-hmm. That's an area the, the 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 pitch where I thought Rangers would have went and strengthened to bring these younger players on. Because sometimes it, I just thought yesterday, looking at them, they looked a wee bit lost. Bill Leck is really strong in the Scottish Sun today. So too Keith Jackson. The record. Keith said Derek McInnes's players were sharper, hungrier, and stronger than their opponents all over the pitch. And Mark, that's a damning indictment. If that's true. And you can hear Barry's frustration. Yeah. It, it, it's I've never no, have I, ever I, seen that. Sometimes they're not very good. It, it is true, Paul. Yeah, <laughs> you, you, the, the evidence is there. It, it is true. And by listen, we've got to say too. Um, first of all, get credit to Kilmarnock and to yeah, Derek sure. McInnes. Yeah. Well, it's a big win to go and be, regardless of the state yeah. that Rangers are in, regardless what people think yeah. of the manager, mm-hmm. they're still going to win, win the game. And they missed a few sitters and they made a no. lot of mistakes. I mean, yeah. both teams. I don't think yeah. both teams are that good to be yeah. honest yesterday but Command got the goal Marley Watkins you know he goes with Vassell and, and yeah. Watkins he said you know what he's, he's seen it Derek he can tell his game plan 
does his homework we're going to go and try and bully them we're going to try and get in about proper and, and, and suitor because they want to play football and then you see Marley Watkins just a wee nudge in John Sewer a wee nudge boom and there he is he's in so when, when you look at it um, credit to, to, to Derek McInnes they got it right and they were hungrier than Rangers yeah I, I just look at the goal I mean I, I kind of go back before the goal actually went into the net I look at three phases the ball goes up up top Igamani you've got to make a defender work to header the ball it's an easy head, f- header for him falls into the middle, middle of the pitch for young Watson who just come on mm-hmm. get close to him don't let him play that ball over the top and then listen big John Suter I think he's been probably Rangers best player this season he has to learn for that you've got to make first contact when that's coming you've got to nudge Watkins not let Watkins nudge you and then obviously it's when, when into the, the back of the net so there's still three phases within that goal that Rangers have to be a hell of a lot better Celtic fans weren't happy either. Saturday afternoon, two up against Aberdeen. Ended up 2-2. Could have been 3-2. I know they came close. Gary's on the line. Been hanging on for a while. Hi, Gary. Good evening. Evening, Paul. Evening, guys. Hi, Hi Gary. Gary. Hiya. Gary, we're talking about Rangers and the budget and all the rest. What about Aberdeen under a manager who's only been in for a few months? And how has he transformed the Dons? Yeah, well, I mean, as I say, be careful what you wish for because there's not the show um, before the game. And I think it's Friday mm. and saying... Mm. You know, that I, I hoped that both teams were going to go for it and showcase Scottish football, and yeah. I thought it was exactly that. I it was Some game, wasn't it? Football, yeah. Game of both halves. Um, really disappointed. Not as not as angry as Derek, obviously, but, you know, disappointed with, with the fact that we threw a two-goal lead away, essentially, do you know what I mean? Because we, we could have been out of sight, obviously, I think, if Leighton Clarkson had the chance to half yep. the deficit in the first half. But, you know, for me, I think it's just down to... Lack of clinical edge for us, it, not just against Aberdeen, but obviously in the last couple of games, I think it's something like 56 shots in goal mm-hmm. and four goals, which which to me kind of slightly worries me. I know Kyogo hit the back of the net and Ida was unlucky with his goal being ruled out, but you know, as I say, I, I, I think we need to really give ourselves a shake now in the next couple of weeks because we've got a tough one to come up against after Atalanta. You know, we've got to go to Far Park and try and win and, and keep mm-hmm. up. So I was, I was disappointed. Everybody was, you know, yesterday after the Rangers result, everybody on my mates are saying, oh, brilliant. And I'm saying, no, because we should be eight points clear, yeah. essentially. Mark, 2-0 isn't enough these days. It, right across football, mm. down south up here as well, often there's the, the comeback. I think you were surprised, though, how good the Dons were. Yeah, I mean, to, to for any team to be two goals down at Celtic Park at half-time, Paul, mm. and come back and get it to 2-2 two, two and, and almost get a winner, um, then you've got to give them a lot of credit. Um, you know, because I, I I thought Celtic would win. I actually thought they would win with a bit to spare. But credit to to Aberdeen, credit to Jimmy Tillin. His half-time team talk yeah. must have been exceptional. And, and he, he's changed yeah. it. Yeah, as, as well as come out the second half, they've had a go. They've been really brave uh, on the ball. Celtic didn't defend well enough. And as uh, as Gary says as well, they're not putting enough in uh, the other end. But brilliant from Aberdeen. You know, you look at the top. You look at the table, Paul. Celtic and Aberdeen. Same number of points, yep. and then you look at the bottom of the table. You've got Hearts and Hibs. It's an unusual table just now, but for Scottish football, great to see Aber in front of St. Alex, Sir Alex Ferguson. Great for uh, to see Aberdeen um, doing what they did. Barry Celtic started so well. You must have thought two 0 It could be three, four. Yeah, and I thought just as Mark said there, I, I thought um, look, it would have been a, a tough one for for Celtic, but I thought Celtic would have had too much for for Aberdeen. But you've got to give Aberdeen credit. Mentally, that shows yeah. me they've got something about them. Right. Could they stay the course? Well, they've shown yesterday, certainly in that second half performance, eh, sorry, in Saturday, that second half performance, that the, the, there's something brewing there at Aberdeen, and you've got to give the manager credit as well. He made two substitutions at half time Sockler and Duke, mm-hmm. who are very forward thinking players, and it worked for them. And um, they, they thoroughly deserved their, their point. I know Celtic peppered their goal um, with the 10 minutes of, of injury time. But you've got to give credit to Aberdeen. They look dead and buried at half time, but they're they're um, they're showing that they've got something about them. No doubt about it. Gary, if this was the Aberdeen station, we'd be waxing lyrical about the opposition. <laughs> what about for Celtic though? Unique, of course, undefeated in the league, but it's been a. Well, what, what are you feeling, Atalanta? You're off to Bergamo on what tomorrow for the game on yeah, Wednesday. Wednesday yeah. This is massive. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen? Do you know what? Randomly, I, I, I've got a. Good feeling for Wednesday, to be fair. Just just looking at us in terms of yeah. 
sort of how poor we've been in front of goal. I think something's got to give, something's got to click um, from that middle to front. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's been it's been such a long time since we've won away from home. I think. Anderlecht I think was the last time in 2017 so you know it's got to come at some point it, you know I know they won kind of comfortably at the weekend so despite the despite the injury worries I, I do see is doing a bit of a smash and grab on Wednesday night to be fair I think guys Celtic miss Cameron Carter Vickers so badly you yeah. can see that they go I mean look at the Aberdeen's it's first obvious, goal Paul. isn't it he's yeah. huge for Celtic Carter Vickers you, you take him out of the team they, they look um, they're not the same team they look very shaky and vulnerable at the back so the quicker they get Carter Vickers back the, the better because listen he's, he's, he's a rock at the back different class Atalanta Gary without six of their top players for the game because of injury but Mark as we know Atalanta Europa, Europa League uh, winners uh, beating Leverkusen just four or five months ago. Yeah, beat Leverkusen the final, beat Liverpool comfortably yeah. Uh, yeah. on the way. And don't Top tell of the me, table. Ju- I don't yeah. tell me Jurgen Klopp didn't want to try and win that game. He knew he was going to oh, sure. his last one. So yeah. they, they're a top team. I do not share Gary's optimism uh, for a smash and grab or that the, the trend's got to change sometime. I get all that, but at the moment, um, no, I think uh, Celtic's job is, is, is uh, the, the home games to try and pick up points there. Uh, Atalanta, I'm not saying you write it off. But what they don't want to do is they do not want to draw attention to themselves for another heavy defeat away from home. Just, you know, stay in the game, try and keep mm-hmm. it tight, try and nick a goal. But I don't share your optimism, Gary. I, I just don't have the evidence to, to, to back that up. Do you think to be I'm, honest, Mark, yeah. it's probably more than, more than hope. Than yeah, sure, of course. Be Barry, do you think uh, Aberdeen can hold on to Jimmy Tillin? Because there'll be some changes in England soon. You know, to some of the teams, his name was mentioned two weeks ago. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's a bit early Paul he's just through the door listen he's had a brilliant start to his Aberdeen Mm. career he's made some really good signings it looks to me uh, it's a team high in confidence Mm. and listen winning breeds confidence and that's Mm. what they're doing albeit they they come away from Celtic Park with a point but we all know it's a tough place to go and get something from in Aberdeen Um, went back up the road on Saturday I would guess feeling really good about themselves and Rangers have got that test Next week, up at Petaudry. Sir Alex was there, wasn't he? Mm. At the game, Sir Alex Ferguson. Yeah. To see what happens when Fergie then comes to the Aberdeen game. <laughs> um, Gary, thanks so much. Just ask Mark, Mark, who were you with at the weekend? Because one of the all-time great Celtic players you saw at the weekend. Yeah, I had a lovely wee uh, day out just catching up with Sir Ken and uh, had a yeah. lovely day out with him. He was in great form, great health yeah. and enjoying watching his, his Liverpool team just now. And of course, a former Newcastle manager as well, Gary, because I know you're a... You like yeah, and you can't. Yeah, bad, 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 bad result for you. At the office, yeah. but yeah. just in terms of what uh, what you guys thought of the the VR decisions near the yeah. end of the game, you know, what do you with, think with the, the penalty? I'll be honest, I, I did think on first view, and I thought it's hit off his thigh and on his arm, therefore it's not a penalty. Mm-hmm. But I've seen certain angles that just look like it's a handball. So the fact that Greg Aitken doesn't send Nick Walsh to the monitor, okay. I thought yeah. for the for the Luke McCowan fill. Yeah. Um, that, that could have been a penalty as well. I, I thought again, probably just outside the box. But again, that they, those kind of decisions should be going to the monitor. I think. Do you know what I, mean? yeah. I think. I, 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 I'd probably agree with you on the handball one. Let the referee go and have a look. But it depends mm-hmm. on what angles are, are available. Uh, however, the, the, yeah. the, the Luke McCowan uh, foul, Gary. That's factual. Mm-hmm. It was outside the box and a good distance outside the box. Once you see that, a good distance. Down. Everyone else is saying it was inches. Yeah. Nah, yeah. for me, it was a, it was a, it was a clear. It was a clear free yeah. kick. It was nowhere near a penalty kick. Pat nowhere Bonner near. said it was just inches away. Yeah. Still factual. Wasn't a penalty. <laughs> Gary, it's all about opinions. Thanks for yours. 0808 17 17 700. Monday night's off and running, Gary. Barry. This is the Go Radio Football Show. Listen anytime, wherever you get your podcasts. Let's go. Lots of calls coming in 08 08 17 17 700 Celtic fans not particularly happy after Saturday surrendering a two goal lead Rangers fans raging after losing at Rugby Park and some of them not that surprised saying it was a real chance to narrow the gap and it was Barry but it's now widened to yeah, six points Oh look I, I totally get why they're angry frustrated disappointed with, um, whatever you, you want to call it I, I'm the same I was sitting watching the game thinking right opportunity here to claw back a couple of points 
don't care about if the performance is top class mm. just make sure you're physically and mentally ready um, to come away from Rugby Park with three points in the bag and, and, and up the road and um, at no stage did I ever feel that, that that's what's that's that, that's a worrying thing for me at no stage during the game did I ever feel that Rangers were in control and as I said look um, it's easy to say how poor Rangers were but at times you've got to give the, the opposition credit and you've got to give Derek McInnes credit because mm-hmm. the yep. way he set his command look team up um, is he always does sets them up very well very solid and compact and they they play to their strengths that's what Kilmarnock do they've got two physical guys up front in Marley Watkins and Vassell they've got two wide boys um, that, that hug the touchline they get it forward as quickly as possible they get balls into the wide area and get balls into the box and try and make you defend and they try and ruffle you up and that's what exactly what they the, the done to Rangers uh, yesterday. If you want to speak to Barry, call now. 0808 08 17 17 700. Mark, at half time, the banners came out from some of the Rangers fans about the mismanagement of the club. They claimed not good enough, it needs to stop now. And when pressure, you heard Derek, 10, 15 minutes, the passion of him. You know what it's like for directors of the club, they'll be doing their best, but it's not good enough at the moment. No, it's, it's, it's a million miles away, um, Paul. It's not gonna. I keep saying it, and I know I understand it. Oh, yeah, you know, sack the manager, bring in Derek McInnes. Okay, I, I, I get that. Um, but you can't just keep sacking managers. You know, it's not just about the manager. It's the football club is restructuring itself. It's trying to get itself on, on, a, on a solid footing. They're downsizing financially, and the managers bought into that. So they've got a manager that's on board with the plan if he wasn't on board they wouldn't have signed an extension and they probably would have punted him by now so you're going to have to dig in I get it that doesn't mean to say that you get a free pass for the next eight months I, I, I totally get that. that that's just not acceptable but what I would do is if I'm looking at just now I'm kind of writing off Europe anything you can get in Europe is a bonus for the for the Europa League um, it's hanging in it's like going to Pataudry and recover next week being St Merlin on Sunday going to Pataudry Cup semi-final come up. where it might come to if Philippe Clement is still in a job and by this point come December 15th if it's a Celtic Rangers Cup final I would expect or there should be should have been an excuse but if why not they don't have a CEO and a chairman in by and certainly a CEO and by December the 15th if you can't beat Celtic again then that, that that's a problem and I would say okay ahead of the January window maybe you do need to look um, at changing but right now I think you've got you've got to ride with it the club is in Transition, it's not normal circumstances. It's in transition, but you know I'm not a, a I'm not a cheerleader for Lee Clermont. Far from it. Yeah. But what my main point, is, you just can't keep sacking managers. Here's what he said at the end about the fans and the unrest among the Rangers supporters. No, but it's normal that they're unhappy. <laughs> There's not one uh, uh, one person in the staff or one person of the players who was happy after this game after losing. So that's normal. So the, sh- the players showed respect towards the fans. The fans showed what they felt about, about the results. And that's a normal thing. So it's about uh, getting back the results on the pitch. That's the, that's the main thing to do. And then the fans go behind you. Because the day before, Barry, as you know, Brendan Rodgers, they dropped points for the first time and he was, he was really disappointed. Yeah, yeah, I always, I always feel that. I think the nature of how we play and you can see the, the speed in the game that we had. There were so many other players going down and, and everything else. Um, but no, listen, give credit to them. They defended well when they had to. We're disappointed with the, uh, uh, with the, with the uh, performance in that small period. But we uh, will move on from it and be better for it, hopefully. Dave, a Celtic fan, is on the line. Hi, Dave. Good evening. Hi, Paul. Hi, Barry. Hi, Mark. How are you doing? Hi, Dave. How are you yeah, doing? Good, thanks. Dave, what went wrong? Was that just a hiccup on Saturday or did you see something more worrying? I don't think I saw something more worrying. I mean, obviously, the weekend didn't turn out the way I'd hoped it would, but at the end of the day, it kind of worked out all right for us. We've gone a, a point further for you. Um, I just couldn't believe Rangers yesterday, to be honest. Uh, they were shocking. <laughs> There's no other way word to describe it. Uh, Saturday... Yeah, fair play to Aberdeen. They came in at a go. Um, did we miss Cameron and Carter Rickers? Yeah, we did. But, you know, we'll have injuries over the season. Um, I went to see how the cup game works out now. They get caught out badly. 
Barry, didn't they? That first goal, for example, Aberdeen, the tactical change that you mentioned, it really worked. Yeah, it was a great ball, to be fair, yep. from McGrath. No doubt about it. Uh, split the Celtic defence, but the defending's got to be better there. Um, and listen, it's a it's a good finish. But listen, what what thing? One thing about Aberdeen, where I, it makes you sit up and take notice is coming back from two 0 down. Mm. It shows you there's there's certainly confidence. They believe in themselves, but there's big characters. That, that's mm. um, that, that's a big result for Aberdeen, and it's shown me that they maybe be here for the the, the long term. Mm. I'm talking about this season. Um, Listen, there's still a lot of football to be played. They've got another big game next Wednesday when Rangers travel out to Petodre, but they've shown that they're, they're more than capable of, of, of challenging both uh, Celtic and Rangers at this moment in time. Mark, here in the West, are we dismissing them and underestimating? You know, the West of Scotland media that yeah. Sir Alex used to say when he was at Aberdeen, <laughs> ah, you Glasgow people. Got an influence, don't you? Know, yeah, yeah, well, okay, I'm going to uh, refer back to being in here when Celtic beat Rangers earlier in the season on the Monday night. And uh, we were making reference to, to Chris Boyd's comments, which were, you know, Rangers have got a fight to finish second. Can forget, forget about winning the league. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't agree with that. I thought that Rangers would be would be comfortable in second places. I think Celtic will win the league comfortably over 38 games. But now, Paul, yeah, there's a fight. It's, mm-hmm. it's actually not. It's okay. Obviously, the ultimate aim is to go and win the league. But right now, it's about trying to show that, that that you've got more than Aberdeen. And when you look at the ability and the character and the mentality of Aberdeen to do what they did on Saturday then they are here you know because they, oh, you've not played anybody yet which is disrespectful to other teams yeah, sure. when you're going away to, to Ross County and Dundee and winning games so they have got a bit about them and the other thing about Jimmy Tillene and the Aberdeen guys they lost their biggest threat their biggest goal machine Vyovsky yes. sold them and lost them in summer and they've no mind about that <laughs> yeah. I made an excuse they've, they, they've cracked on so do I see Aberdeen winning the league over 38 games absolutely not I mean I've I wouldn't give you two bob for it. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Uh, But do I see them as being able to beat Rangers to second place? Right now, I would say, yeah, why not? Why can't Aberdeen be better than Rangers? On the current evidence, Mm -hmm. uh, I'd be back in Aberdeen more than I'd be back in Rangers right now. Right. It's 24 games unbeaten for Aberdeen. They haven't lost since March Mm -hmm. against Motherwell's 1 0. Listen, I know they didn't play well against Hearts the week before. They were lucky. But they signed a good team, Paul. When you don't play well, you find a way to win. And this is where I'm going back to Rangers yesterday. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't play well in games. You don't perform at the level that you should. But you have to find a way. That's what Aberdeen done just before the international break against Hearts. Andy Walker was at the game and he says Hearts were really good, yeah. really impressive. But Aberdeen found a way. Yesterday, Rangers weren't good, but when you're not good, you need to win. And um, unfortunately, yesterday for Rangers, it just wasn't good enough. And they came away with nothing. And um, that's what they deserved. Dave, as a Celtic fan, you did mention Rangers. And Chris Boyd yesterday on Sky Barry, you saw he said, um, they never dominate a game. Is that fair? Yeah, I've been to, I've been to the vast majority of Rangers games this season, and they, they dominate parts. But I, I know what Boyd was probably referring to. Like you want to dominate. I, 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 listen, you can never dominate for 90, 94 minutes, but you need to dominate large parts of the game. And at the games that I've been to this season, I don't think Rangers have dominated the, the, the large parts of the games. They lack belief. Stephen Davis said that, who of course uh, played for Rangers so often, so many times, such distinction. Yeah, he said they lack belief. I'm scratching my head, Paul. Yeah. Just after that, I'll keep referring back to what happened at Celtic Park on Saturday. When you, when as a chance missed, when these opportunities come, you have to grab them yeah. with both hands. I mean, could you imagine? 20 years or well, under Walter's second time or Dick Advocate's time if you're in that circumstance and that result comes through on the Saturday night you're in the team hotel mm-hmm. you are singing and dancing down to your dinner on the Saturday night as you say you're getting the boy and that's one thing and again people oh, you're old fashioned you're you know, old school but I do believe at clubs you know, like, like Celtic and, and like Rangers with big traditions big fan base demands to win uh, every week you need three or four Paul that know what it's all about yeah and Rangers don't have that just now. No, you mentioned the guy Steve Davis. So mm-hmm. Steve has been yep. in the building going. Yep. John Lundstrom got to know what it was about. Mm-hmm. Wasn't he a Rangers support, but got to know what it was about Ryan Jack. I don't think he was a Rangers supporter, but got to know what what what, what it was about. Then you get going back to Barry's time um, and other guys. Yep. But right now, you look through that starting eleven yesterday, and the captain and 
in, included and I think a big supporter of James Tavernier but his time's come and gone mm. it's time to move him on um, Cyril Dessers really nice guy we've got a lot of time from I admire him but he's not a title winning striker and I said that in January when Rangers didn't go and get Lauren Shankland Cyril Dessers is not a title winning striker you need to be ruthless and they need to go and find better for what they've got because by the way they're not looking for boys at two and three grand a week Paul they're not looking for guys at maybe 20 grand a week so there's still a right good budget to go and try and get better in than what they have and that's the biggest challenge and also once the guys come into the building Philippe Clement needs to improve them and that's on him <laughs> Not enough improvement in the, in the, yeah. the current guys. It makes a good point. Like yesterday, I'm no playing. Uh, uh, let everybody knows my team's Rangers. Mm -hmm. At five o'clock or just after five o'clock, I'm thinking, right, brilliant. I know you're only eight games in. I know uh, Rangers had only played seven, eight yesterday yeah. against Kilmarnock. And I'm thinking to myself, well, do you know what? The season, the start to the season is no, be I, no been ideal in terms of obviously suffering that uh, defeat against Dynamo Kiev, going out of the Champions League suffering the heavy defeat at Celtic Park against Celtic but then if you go there and win even if it's scrappy mm -hmm. you come away with a 1-0 you think to yourself 8 games in we're only 3 points mm -hmm. it's looking a bit better and that's the thing that I'm scratching my head with you've got to go in that game knowing that that's the, that's the perfect result that you wanted on Saturday now did I see that coming? no I didn't no. I thought Celtic would have easily beat Aberdeen but listen you know what football's like, yeah. it throws up some crazy results at times. Aberdeen come away with a point and you think to yourself, right, it's a chance now to claw that back a wee bit. And Rangers had that opportunity and they didn't take it, Paul. Dave, two quick things, we need to move on. It shows you, you can't take anything for granted, can you? You must have enjoyed the first half with uh, Hatati's goal, Kyogo's goal, but then in the second. But what were the moments? Let's say something positive about your team. Um. Well, the fact that we were, we were, I mean, okay, we didn't score, but I mean, the last 10, 15 minutes, it was just relentless and, you know, their people had some really good saves and there was some clearances off the line. So, I mean, beforehand, we knew it was going to be the toughest game of the season so far and we've had it and fair play to Aberdeen for coming of a go. Um, I don't know what Jimmy Tallinn's mm. got, but it's, we've mentioned a few times yeah. they sold mm. their, be their best striker in the summer and don't seem to have been affected by it. Yep. I thought Liam Scales was a great game, I've got to say. I know he was possibly caught in possession for one of the goals, mm. but Liam Scales ran his heart out for us, and it's time to sell it. fans start giving him a bit more credit than he gets. All right, Dave, thanks so much for your call. It's a real Monday night, isn't it? Controversy, you know, Celtic dropping points for the first time this season, up there with the Dons on Saturday. It's unusual. It was a great game, though, wasn't it? If there's such a thing as a neutral, 2-2. Mm -hmm. uh, two -two. Yeah, yeah. Look, like everybody, you see the result at half-time, 2-0, yeah. Everybody's thinking Celtic will go in there and, and maybe get another mm. um, one or two. Did you but switch off the 77 inch telly at that point? Or no, no the, the last 10 <laughs> minutes of injury time, I was uh, I was behind the sofa, <laughs> if I'm being honest with you. Uh, but listen, listen Aberdeen, I, again, you, you've got to give them credit. Yep. Listen, it's easy to go and feel sorry for yourself, certainly, in front of 60,000, but they come out there and they, they showed me that they've got something about them this season. This is the Go Radio Football Show. Listen anytime, wherever you get your podcasts. Let's go! It's the Monday edition of the Go Radio Football Show. After a weekend, well, you know the story, Celtic drawing 2-2, having been 2 up. Dundee United, what do Hibs have to do to get points? They're winning against Dundee United minutes to go and they lose 3-2. What about this one? Hearts 4, St Mirren 0. Although St Mirren talking with Steve Robinson about his extension to his contract and why not? He has been brilliant. Dundee winning at Motherwell. Motherwell had three in a row. Not to be. And it was your favourite Lyle Cameron, Barry, who scored, as you know, and St Johnson 3, Ross County 0. And then we know about Sunday Kelly taking the points against Rangers. Some weekend, it was a difficult one to get right, wasn't it? Yeah, um, some of the results obviously asked us in, in Friday yeah. night. That was a great result for Dundee going to, to Fir mm, Park. Yeah. I mean, um, not at the best of starts to the season. Mullow have been flying high with a couple of brilliant results. Um, so Tony Docker will be delighted with that. And in terms of Hibs, 2 1 up. And then Dundee United coming back in the last, obviously, into extra time, scoring the two goals to, to get the three points. And then it's strange when you actually look at the Premier League table. And you look at both mm. Hearts and Hibs, bottom two, um, it's not good enough in terms of the budgets that they've got. We're talking about Rangers, obviously, 
budget sky high but Hearts and Hibs I would imagine their budgets will be yeah. pretty decent and they've got to be doing better as football clubs you know, and crowds of 18 19,000 are selling out but the the Edinburgh 2 bottom of the table joint on 5 points and it's the derby next week isn't it mm. in Edinburgh it's, uh, it's strange to see but then you can you can look at Hearts and you'll see that they're on the right road and I was quite pleased for Neil Neil Critchley, Paul, I, mean, I thought, you know, some of the, the reaction to his appointment was very, very unfair. You know, give the guy a chance, he got a good coaching mm-hmm. record, he's shown up well uh, in the data because Brighton, the data, w- was involved in choosing the manager, so he's shown up well in a lot of things uh, on that. And I thought Hearts looked really energetic, real bit of life about him. I thought St. Man were absolutely shocking, mm-hmm. uh, to be fair. And Stephen Robinson didn't miss him after it, but... Uh, very unusual to see Hearts and Hibs were there Rangers that was the talking point yesterday they lost at Kilmarnock we have 30 games to go so it's always disappointing to lose points because we want to win all the games so we're focused on that so there is our disappointment and also that we not that we cannot build on uh, on what the players did last couple of weeks for example keeping the clean sheet what they did in several games um, creating the chances and, and being decisive so we need to look at ourselves and uh, and make things better. Rangers mad. Paul is on the line right through to Mark and Barry. Good evening, Paul. Hello, well, evening, guys. Thanks for letting me on your show. No today. bother. So, so yeah, thanks for coming on. So, what what are you thinking? What what do you want to say after that yeah. yesterday? Um, I feel like I'm a broken down record, right? But no, I, I've, I've been on about James Tavernier. I've talked about the leadership of the club. Uh, I grew up in an era, no, I'm, I'm very fortunate to grow up in an era with the likes of Barry and the Dick Advoca era and Walter Smith, you know, the Nine Naro era and whatnot, and I'm used to success, yeah. um, and I've never seen Rangers as bad as this. I think my dad, my dad's 74, my dad said, you know, John Gregg being a great player and everything else, he said, but you know, at that time in management, uh, Rangers weren't great, um, but, you know, I think we're going on about it, I, I, I yeah. think it's the, the leadership of the club, I think... You know, it's not going to change until the board's change. You can take Tavernier out there, it's not going to change things. You yeah. can take Clamont out there, it's not going to change things. It's, it's bigger than that I now, isn't one it? Of your callers, yeah. I heard one of your callers saying there, the Rangers fans will decide what's going to happen, and that is what's going to happen. My, my da- as I said, my dad's 74, he said, but back then, Paul, the attendances dribbled right down. Well, they did, I remember. The 80s yeah. came, and then the, we had the, the revolution and all that kind of stuff took place. And unfortunately, that's going to take place, because I'm telling you, do you know what's going to happen mm-hmm. here? Here's a headline, right? We're becoming, we're fast becoming the Borussia Dortmund in Scotland where we're going to accept second place as best. And that's no... Walter, I heard them... Um, uh, no, you're talking there about Walter Smith and people like that. Walter Smith would have never accepted... See that game? I, I nearly fell asleep watching that. that I, I could watch paint dry watching that. It was, it was boring. It was... It was abysmal and that's no disrespect for yeah. Kilmarnock I think Kilmarnock set up well yeah. but I'll tell you there's no creative spark in that team whatsoever it's, it's one one bad decision mm. after another and I'll tell you come on Barry you, you spoke to Philippe come on I know you won't go into what the private conversations are but I can't see what that guy's trying to do with that team I mean can you What's he, what would you say can you yeah, see what he's trying I mean, to in do terms of, look, Paul makes a, a good point uh the final third is where you want things to happen and um, we've got Cherney, we've got Tom Lawrence, we've got Barami uh, and we've got Dessers and, uh, and they never created much, Paul. I was disappointed. I need to see, I need to see more. Uh, Barami is a big signing. Cherney's come in from, I think it's Wilsburg, who's played mm-hmm. at a decent level. He's an international player. I need to see more. Tom Lawrence, I get... Go for Albania. Yeah, I know. I get Tom Lawrence um, had an ugly injury, mm-hmm. but listen, he's he's been one of the better performers for Rangers this this season. But I need to see more, Paul. It's um, it's easy going and and picking out individuals. Clearly, Rangers were well off it. weren't good enough yesterday, mm-hmm. and it needs to be better going forward. If Rangers are wanting to pick up points, i.e. Europa League mm-hmm. Thursday night against a still a Bucharest team who are languishing fifth in the league I know they've had a couple of wins in Europa League Rangers need to be beating teams like that then St Murn come to Ibrox on Sunday you need to be hammering them you need to be taking oh, three and four off thing? them can, can, can I just say one thing about the board here's my point you guys can't say it's pundits and everything else I'm going to say it as a fan see Dave King in Douglas Park they need to iron out their differences because the two yeah. of them mm-hmm. are battling one another and it's, a, it's impacting Rangers Football Club so Dave King and Douglas Park if you listen to this programme 
put your differences aside and for the greater good of Rangers football club but you say you have your heart mm-hmm. you need to settle your differences and stop this point scoring palama that's coming for Dave King because all it's doing is hampering mm-hmm. the players on the pitch that that's the bottom line for me because I'm, I'm I'm getting scunnered with yeah. it now. The fans it's are. Technical. Mark, it is a good point. Dave King wants to get back involved but he doesn't want to put in any more money in just now. I was yeah. going to ask both of you, Rangers need money just now and shareholders who've worked hard and all the rest of it, they've put money in, they've uh, loaned money to the club yeah. but they're going to have to get fresh capital in. Yeah? yeah, It doesn't take Einstein to know that. They're going to have to sell some of their shareholding or whatever and he's right Dave King and Douglas Park or George Letham or whatever it's not going to take the club any further at the moment and if they do get money mm-hmm. is Philippe Clement the man to take them forward? Well, Paul, what I would say about that is I agree with you it's clear for everybody to see I don't yeah. think anybody would deny it. inside or outside the club they need money ok they're yeah. tens and tens of millions of pounds behind Celtic but if they get money Paul for me the money should go into restructuring the football club yeah. getting a, a strategy oh, it's not about getting money to give Philippe come on £20 million to spend in January yeah give him you know funds you need to be careful as well with financial fair play yeah. it's the whole football club Paul and I think that's what John Bennett was trying to say mm-hmm. in August in the statement it wasn't a popular statement to the Rangers fans but it was an honest one you can't keep losing £10 million a of year you can't keep doing it oh, you, you, you know, know what happens that yeah, happened 12 yeah, years ago exactly yeah. so you need to restructure the whole football club yeah. that's what you need to do you need to get better people in the building you need to get better value for money not just on the park off the park as well better people in. I always remember Paul you were working in it I was working on it Barry was a young player coming through what about Fergus McCann the stick that Fergus oh. McCann used to get for the Celtic supporters and the media because Rangers were spending a million and, spe- and Fergus would only spend 250 grand. And I remember the story he told, and it's connected to Rangers now, they were going after a player that Tommy Burns wanted and say there was 500 grand set aside for the player and they wanted to get the, the, the club wanted 650 grand to buy him. And Fergus said, no, 500 grand's more. We can see that 150 grand, that's set aside to build a new restaurant mm-hmm. that'll last for 50 years, it'll bring us money in every second week. The long-term thinking, a long-term strategy. If we want the player, we're spending 500, we're not spending 650. And they never got the player. But they got it, and, and it's just a small yeah, thing. Sure. But it's, yeah, they need money, but you're not going to cure all your ills by just mm-hmm. buying three or four players. For me, looking mm-hmm. on the outside... Looking in, it's the whole football club. There's a change of mentality required, and there needs to be long term, long term thinking in place. Yeah, spread out throughout yeah. the whole club, yeah. uh, 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 through the infrastructure. Mm. There's no doubt that look, they need fresh investment. Yeah, Paul, they've, they've they've made that clear. There's there's no doubt. John Gilligan at this moment in time, who has got Rangers' best interests at heart, he's in there just now, trying to steady the ship to make sure they get the next appointment spot on because a CEO, guys like that, they, they run the club day to day and that's the, the probably the most important one that he needs to get correctly and uh, and that's why he, he's taking his time but look, there's no doubt about it, Rangers need fresh investment. Because they're in Storm Ashley, which is what it was yesterday, but no excuses. They need somebody to steady the ship but you need to know who, where the money, if it's coming from, where are they going to surrender some of the... Uh, the shareholding that they have in the club. Paul, listen, we've run out of time just now. There's a lot of calls coming in. 08, 08, 17, 17, 700. Back after the news. Plenty more. This is the Go Radio Football Show. Listen live. Weeknights from five on Go. Let's go. This is the Go Radio Football Show. Listen anytime, wherever you get your podcasts. Call 08, 08, 17, 17, 700. Let's go. Hour two, one of the biggest nights so far of the season and of course with Rangers losing yesterday failing to take advantage of Celtic dropping points against Aberdeen on Saturday. What are you thinking? Celtic fans, you've got a game 5.45 kickoff, so we are less than 40 hours away from Atalanta against Celtic. Barry Ferguson is here, Mark Guidi too. And Mark, that's a huge game for Brendan Rodgers and Celtic after the result three weeks ago yeah it, it's massive Paul you just don't want another heavy defeat look I have to be honest there's a potential there for a sore one because Atlanta are a right good team they're on their own patch but I think for Celtic um, it's just don't be attracting attention to themselves just, just be harder to beat you know to defend uh, a bit better and then take your chances but Paul Celtic oh, if they're going to get through it'll be the home games that'll do it you know going, going to Atalanta for me on paper is more difficult than Dortmund to be perfectly honest Atlanta are a first 
class football team It's going to be interesting to see if tactically he changes and make Celtic set a bit deeper and be more compact I think that's the way you have to go when you go away and play these top teams in Europe you've, I think you've always got to be respectful and I know you mentioned five or six players yeah. but they're still a quality team Atalanta <laughs> we've seen what they've done last year mm-hmm. obviously winning the trophy and beat, beating Bayer Leverkusen in, in the final so I think if Celtic go and play their usual open and expansive football I think it could be another sore one for them. Especially when you think about it, with them beating Leverkusen, who were unbeaten, yeah. as you know. Yeah, they were, in the a, I mean, they were yeah. an absolute fire last season, yeah. but so were Atalanta. The Atalanta have got some quality operators. 2-2 two, two at the weekend in front of 60,000 at Celtic Park. It was match of the day. Yeah, obviously frustrated with a point, I think, when you when you play, especially at Celtic Park, and you draw a game, it always feels like a, a defeat. Um, yeah, we were just careless in the game. We, we were in a really good position in the first half we were 2-0 up and could have had more goals didn't quite take the opportunities and then then with that 10 minute period in the, in the second half between the 50th and 60th minute where we were um, just a bit passive and not aggressive enough and uh, with the ball without the ball in particular and you do that against good teams then they can punish you they score the first goal and then we're careless with the second one we give it away in a really really bad area and then they have the tails up at two each and then that ignites us again and then for that last 25 minutes we, we're doing everything we can to score the speed of the game is good and we end up with what 32 attempts in goal and, and then a mixture of good defending and their keeper making some great saves we didn't uh, we didn't find the winner so um, but you've you got to give credit uh, I think to, to Aberdeen coming here been 2-0 down and it's always a dangerous scoreline but they get to 2 1 and then they have momentum. And um, But we, we should have controlled it better. Celtic fans, what are you thinking? 08 08 17 17 700, or you can join the conversation at Goal Football Show. Rangers fans coming on as well. Some of them, here's Billy asking, Barry, what was John Lindstrom um, thinking when he had to go at Robbie McCrory, who's now a Kilmarnock player? We know he's was at Rangers for years, but calling him a Muppet after he celebrated for Kilmarnock winning. What did you feel? Yeah, I, seemingly it was something to do with social media. He had put on his Instagram, I yeah. think, uh, celebrating, saying, <laughs> what a. What a victory! Mm. At the end of the day, he's a he's a command not player now. Mm-hmm. Um, young McCrory uh, and obviously John Lundstrom took offence to that and and gave him a bit on on the socials. But that's one of the reasons why I'm not on it, Paul. You're absolutely right, Mark. I and they were teammates. Yeah, you know they're teammates. So you wonder yeah. maybe maybe there's a bit of history between the uh-huh. two of them personally, because yeah. um, I don't see why John Lundstrom needs to react. And, and that man I didn't see it so I don't know what Robbie McCrory yeah. put out there if it was in the order if he was just celebrating a win I've no idea but I'm surprised at John Lundstrom's reaction but maybe maybe they didn't get on when they were teammates and John Lundstrom could have done more for Rangers he had good spells he came with a great pedigree he mm-hmm. was on big money but there were spells when he didn't perform as well as the Rangers fans might have expected yeah I mean yeah I mean you can off the top of my head uh, you know the straight red card at Celtic Park did he need to do that he cost his team so that, listen he was I think Rangers could be doing with Lundstrom uh, just now, uh, Paul. Th- there's no doubt about that. Um, but again, you know, just want just there's been too many Rangers players mm-hmm. over the past few years that have come in, talk to talk, taking big money, which no happening at all. Happy for that, but um, just no able to deliver on a, on a uh, regular basis. Here's a bit more from Brendan Rodgers swinging back to Celtic. A little bit more about the game, his thoughts afterwards. Is, but I said before the game, I think it's one of those on the back end of an international break. And all the players have been away, some of them travelling all around the world to come back. And I never expected us to be to be perfect. Um but we'd done enough in the first half, we were really good and we'd done enough in the last twenty five minutes. But we uh we, we, we had a spell just where we, we weren't aggressive enough. And uh when you do that against good players, they, they score. So um so yeah, it um, it's disappointing now but hopefully we can learn from it Mark I see Kyogo's in the media today saying he wants to make his mark against Atalanta we know how good they are the defensive record is superb I know they've got big injuries list for uh, Wednesday mm-hmm. but it's a big test what are you thinking uh, about Kyogo? Yeah I mean I've been to see uh, Brendan Rodgers starting 11 uh, is Kyogo a certain start for me? No I don't really no. make try something different at number 9 you know so I, I'm not so sure but look he's a quality player 
if he's given a chance most of the time uh, he'll stick them away but yeah I'm just been interested to see Brendan Rodgers start I mean I don't think he can make too many changes you no know, sitting with guys here like we've said before putting two big destroyers you know holders to protect it. but I just think there, there needs to be a, a more of an emphasis on the defensive responsibility of the outfield 10 player of course try and get to Atlanta and do your bit in whatever way they decide to press I get all that but really hammer home the message about how important it is to be together to be compact and to defend for your life Could you see a change though? Could there be four in the midfield rather than the three that he normally goes with? But again I'm not really sure overly sure you know Atlanta's strengths and weaknesses you know, you'll pick a team in the formation your tactics based on that as well how you think they're going to line up um, I don't know it's you know I can't see there being two you know as I say I don't think there's people would they maybe put Luke McCown would they play Bernardo eh, Hitati Engels and McGregor I, I don't know but they, they, they tend to kind of stick to what they um, what they know so I don't I'm not expect, I'm not expecting anything go, oh my god I didn't see that huh. coming you know I don't you know a four six zero, and I don't expect anything wild uh, like that, but just just be more aware of your defensive responsibilities. Right, we're talking about we're not sitting there, we're not talking about sit ten men behind the ball in your own eighteen yard box, but you, you you've got to be more savvy when you go away from home. And I think Celtic have got the players to play in the counter. They've got genuine mm. pace in the wide areas, so that you can really counter a, a, a team. And I'm sure Atalanta will be pretty wide open the way that they they play. And um, yeah, you're coming up against a high quality team. Another good victory. They're sitting, I think, fifth or sixth in Serie A at this moment in time. They've had a steady start to the the season. They won again away from home. I think it was Vicenza. I think at the weekend and, and Sunday. And I, I would be I would be very surprised if Celtic go with the same game plan they did against Dortmund. What did Brendan Rodgers make of Aberdeen after the game? Yeah, yeah. I said I hadn't obviously come up against them, so it was always going to be a, see how the um, uh, see how they are. So, so yeah. Listen, they, they have one game a, one game a week, so they get plenty of time to prepare and, and have energy going into the game. So uh, they're well coached. Um, they worked hard and they work hard for each other. And uh, a result like today will obviously give them that confidence. So. Um, but uh, but yeah, I thought uh, I thought they did well to and deserved the point in the end. Barry, one game a week. We've just come off the international well, break. I'm afraid if you play a big cr- uh, club, mm. you're expected to play g- uh, three games a, a season. Certainly when you when you play in Europe and you've got a big squad, and it's the same with Rangers. They've come up against the uh, Stour Bucharest on Thursday, and then um, three days later you've got St Man. You've got to deal with the, the circumstances. Yeah, I mean for Aberdeen it is it's it's, it's a great scenario. Mm. Although I'm, I'm sure they'd rather be in European football, yeah, but so it's a money men. Yeah, yeah, it's a great scenario. Be able to get you know three or four good sessions a weekend in, in, in preparation. That said, um, you know it's it's not up there for why Celtic should be thrown away a uh, two goal lead. So I don't get it. You know there was you know wasn't they mentioned at half time about Aberdeen yeah. only having one game a week. So no, I think it's more about giving credit to Aberdeen and analysing your own team and um, being better at defending. Um, and being um, a more lethal in front of goal that's it Mitov did have a couple of brilliant saves mm-hmm. that he had a couple of brilliant saves but I thought Aberdeen defended well too you could really say see Paul that, that they cared in what they were doing you know they really had it and Graham Shinney really leading mm-hmm. like a captain you know you could see when they were they were getting going and they were scoring their he goals. loved it didn't he oh, the yeah. way they celebrated right over the <laughs> yeah. corner the pocket Aberdeen fans you know how much that they were getting out mm-hmm. of it and knowing that they were getting themselves back into the game and really giving Celtic a run for their money I think defending's an art you've got to have pride in defending your goal and that's what Aberdeen showed listen they were getting peppered the last 10 minutes it was just waves of attack but listen guys were throwing their bodies in front of the ball Mitov who listen he's a good goalkeeper I know he made a mistake a few weeks ago but listen that happens with goalkeepers but that's been a good signing for Aberdeen that goalkeeper he almost got caught out as well didn't he just uh, outside his area Engels was it who had a good just yeah, came yeah, off the, the bar game yeah, was a, yeah. maybe as a, a former goalkeeper there, should, I there, should I stay or should I go it was a class <laughs> job wasn't it <laughs> I just shut my eyes and hoped for the best um, do you remember that one yeah should I, I, I the class should, should I, I stay go? or should, should I go exactly you yeah. want me to leave um, not, not at all <laughs> you're on fire tonight <laughs> so yeah Meetup has been a good sign and, and, and so important to get good goalies for sure 08 17 17 
Seven hundred. Oh. So right, the Rangers. A lot of Rangers fans oh. coming on. Barry, you've been very honest. Um, what you come back to that point? Yeah, I'm af- yeah, I'm afraid we do. <laughs> we come back to uh, Philippe Clement. His thoughts overall on the game, the one nil defeat at Rugby Park. Did you get the game that you expect? And all respect to uh, Kilmarnock in that way. That's also why uh, they only been beaten by by Celtic and us in almost the last year. Um, but there's no excuse in that way. So we know, we knew what conditions it was to play here. I was not happy with the first half in that way, that we didn't create enough chances and we gave away too many situations in the duels that we were not good enough. On the long balls and, uh, and the first ball, second ball, was much better in the second half. And that's, that's then the, the disappointing thing, the moment that you take much more control of the game. And in general, you had the ball in the game, I think it was around 70% of the time. The moment you have the second half, the control, you get the chances there, you hit the crossbar, you have several corners, you have blocked shots. Then you need to kill it off, and then it's uh, disappointing to get a goal against like that. So with one blind ball behind the defence uh, in no man's land, and where our defensive line was was not good at that moment. But yeah, those are things to work on with with new players coming into the building. Barry, what are you hearing there from the manager? His summary was that fair? Well, yeah, I, I like the fact that he's not using the the surface and the, the weather as an excuse. Mm. Um, and one thing. Watching the game, I don't think Rangers matched Kilmarnock's aggression. Mm-hmm. And that's one thing you have to do, certainly against a Derek McKinnon. Certainly since he's come into Kilmarnock, that's one thing about Kilmarnock. They're very aggressive. They're a big, strong team. And if you don't match that, then you, you're going to be in trouble. So you knew that was going to be the case? Rangers knew? Yeah, I, I said on Friday. Yeah, you did. There's no yeah. surprises. You, you know what? You're going to get from um, Derek's team. They're going to play two big boys up top in Watkins and Vassell. Your two yeah. boys in the wide area yeah. are going to cause you issues. As soon as they get the ball, they're going to cross it into the box and you have to defend. And goal kicks, they don't play it out for the back much, Kilmarnock. McCrory was getting it long yep. up to Vassell and he was holding off proper the vast majority of the game and players were getting in round about that. And if you don't win the first ga- uh, the first ball, you have to win the second ball. And Commander were picking up far too many of the second balls, and that was a that was a big disappointment for me. Mark, that, that, yeah. that's a problem. It's it's almost as if Derek McInnes has identified what you would say in inverted commas a soft centre. Mm-hmm. Get it right in about him. And again, I'll go back to the recruitment. Whether it's mm-hmm. Niels Coppin, whether it's the manager, about everybody was was proper the best that Rangers could find. It's got to be better than that out there for. For me, you know, he's, he's 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 getting bullied. You know, I don't think he, he enjoys the physicality uh, of a of a duel, as, as Philippe Clement calls them, the duels. Um, they just they just need to be better, Paul, and they need to be getting. Because you think about it, that's a theme that's been running through Rangers for a while now. Value for money, getting the best value for money, and getting the best. Up until this season, they had a higher wage build in Celtic. Yeah. What did they get back for it? You know, two 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 the trophies in five years yeah. or whatever it may sure. be. Yeah. So it's not good enough, uh, and there's clearly there's a there's a problem inside in terms of mentality, in terms of actually appreciating and understanding the demands of what it means to play for Rangers. I think that's a big problem that's got to be addressed as well, all through the football club. Here is Luke Kamal speaking about that need to win and to compete. You need to win more duels, what we didn't do enough in the first half. Second half, it was much better. That's one part. Not only with fights, you win these kind of games. You need to do much more things than only fight. So all credit to Kilmarnock in, in the way they do it. And that's why they have also a really good record at home on the pitch here in these circumstances. But we, we need to adapt. There's no excuse for us. Barry, your eyes widened there. Yeah, you have to win the fight first and foremost. That, that's what you have to do you, the first sure. 15 20 minutes of the game you need to make sure Kilmarnock know that pff, eh, Rangers are not going to lie down here they're going to they're up for this mm. their sleeves have rolled up and um, and that's the, the thing that as the manager just mentioned there all over the pitch Kilmarnock were winning far too many of the individual duels on the pitch and when that happens then you're, you, you're in trouble 
Were you surprised that they lost? So you yeah, sat down. I, I was. Yeah. I, after Saturday, Paul, I just after the result, Matt yeah. was was talking earlier on about it. Watched the result coming through, and then you're away up. You th- you think to yourself, well, what an opportunity! Mm. You you have to take these opportunities when they come around in terms of Celtic dropping points. But listen, in terms of a result, that was a perfect result for Rangers, both um, dropping points, and you can claw back a couple of points. Um, from making sure you win that game at Kilmarnock and um, I was just I, I was just sitting there scratching my head all through the game I just couldn't understand why Rangers uh, I just expected more Paul um, just very pedestrian very slow, slow. in possession yeah. weren't aggressive enough um, and I, I expected more and that's why uh, they suffered the, the, the defeat and that's why the manager's clearly saying there that it's, it wasn't good enough. What can you do then? It's the same players just now. Nothing's going to change in the coming weeks. No, you, you can't change. So, well, the, the beauty about football, and I keep saying it, when you do suffer a defeat, great thing about football, there's just another game round the corner and they've got one on Thursday night in Europa League mm. against a, a still a Bucharest team that are, are not really flying high at this moment in time mm-hmm. they're fifth in the league yep they had a good result of the weekend against um, I think one of their, their rivals um, Bucharest as yep. well but a decent result but they're not in the top all away league. from home yep. no they're, 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 they're sitting yep. fifth uh, so like, you've got to go and perform and make sure you, you get a result on Thursday night because the performance the level of performance mm-hmm. yesterday just wasn't good enough. I think the players realised that, Mark. Dynamo Bucharest, it was. Dynamo, right. The, the old Lennon's old team. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Um, Do you know what yeah. I mean? I, yeah, I, I, th- I think Thursday, Paul, we've we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll said in this programme for a number of years now because the evidence is there that, you know, Rangers have more often not they pull out some really good results in yeah. Europe. They did in Malmo, okay, they've, got, uh-huh. they've taken a thumping um, off a of Leon. But Thursday night, Paul, that's, I think, that's going to be a real test for the manager and the players because they're going to feel the pressure they're going to be in front of 50,000 supporters that a lot of them seem to be at the end of their tether that they've had enough Um, and Rangers need to show a strong mentality to go and cope with that to go and you know be patient to break uh, Bucharest down and go and score goals what they don't need is is a defeat at home in Europe in front of their own um, support so this will be I think this will give us a real marker for me looking at them Paul and I'm not just saying it after yesterday but you assess the Rangers squad I've always thought there was a lack of quality in it I didn't expect it to be a lack of fight but right now I see a lack of quality and a lack of fight in over 38 games being honest Rangers are miles and miles away from having the quality and the fight to, to, to be league champions they're miles and miles away can they win it? right now Rangers they'll be nowhere near it Are absolutely nowhere Sorry. near no, it over form, Paul, games. They, that was an ideal opportunity mm. for them um, yesterday and um, they, they, they just didn't show a level of performance that was capable of coming away from Rugby Park with, with, with the three points just really disappointing it's um, yeah it's it's a, it's a sore one to take uh, as I said and, and listen I know the manager will come in for criticism but see as a footballer as well you have to shoulder a bit of responsibility when you cross that white line you need to go and show how much you you want to go and perform and get that three points and at times you can't perform at the level you want but you need to show a bit of grit determination hunger desire whatever way you want to put it and yesterday unfortunately Rangers never showed enough of that this was the manager he was asked What's his message to the Rangers fans after the defeat? That's what you've seen the last couple of weeks also. And there are a lot of players new new here, first time playing at Kilmarnock. So the longer they play here, the more they're used to the circumstances. We get a goal against today where, and it's not pointing at a player for sure not, but it's just explaining situations where a right fullback steps out not together with the rest to put the team offside. It's those details that we paid cash today and in other moments we didn't pay them cash. So the longer this team plays together, the better they will become. And the more they can learn out of the mistakes made and the good moments also. The good things that they did together, what they did already last couple of weeks. And it's about working hard. Working hard, staying together, digging in and getting results. 
And that's the only way to, to get fans behind you, not the, not the other way around. I understand some players haven't played at Kilmarnock before, but your job as a teammate is to let them know what they're, they're getting into. Yeah. What kind of surface it is. I, I know we all know it's artificial, but it's not the best artificial surface, but you've got to let them know that. You, you've got to let them know that they're coming up against two physical centre-forwards, for instance, and Vassell and, and um, Watkins. Mm-hmm. And see Armstrong and Kennedy, tricky wingers, good. Don't give them time in the ball. See the two boys, Donnelly and Lyons in the middle of the pitch, two dogs. That's, that's yeah. what I would be doing. Mm-hmm. I'd be going around and letting everybody know, guys who hadn't been there and don't know too much about them. Mm-hmm. That's what I would be letting them know, that they're, they're in for a, a tough one today. And I just felt, as I said, Rangers didn't match the aggression that, that Kilmarnock had. Kilmarnock were really aggressive in the game. That's one thing um, I will say about them. Because um, yeah. they've not had a, a great start to the season. No. Kilmarnock, no. That was only their second victory right. yep. just before the international break. Um, they beat Dundee. But apart from that, they've not been at their best. But they are still a, a, a good team. You know what you're coming up against. They've got a good manager. But Rangers just didn't um, just didn't turn up, and what surprises me is didn't turn up. You could have clawed back that two points, which is really disappointing. Now you give Celtic and Aberdeen the opportunity to go another point in front of you. Mark, do you know how the news cycle works? You've led it for many, many years. Uh, just looking here online, they're saying Kevin Musket. Some of the Rangers fans want him, and at the same time last year, it's exactly a year ago. You know, when Michael Beale had just gone and was it going to be who would be in charge? Some people said uh, Kevin Musket. Of course, that didn't happen. He was uh, down to the last two, we think. But it's a cycle that comes up too often now for Rangers. Yeah, I mean, that, the benefit of hindsight now, Paul, they were far too quick to get rid of Giovanni Van Bronckhurst. I have to be honest, you know, you talk about improving players, getting to European final, making assets. Giovanni Van Bronckhurst they ticked a lot of boxes, but that's gone now. They're now two managers on. From Giovanni Van Brock, and we talk in this program a lot um, about maybe like a snobbery against not looking at Scottish players, not looking yeah. at what's kind of under your nose um, here. Um, so I'm not saying Philippe Clement should lose his job. I'm not saying that at all. But what I will say in our first caller tonight, Derek mentioned that if they're going to make a change of manager, then there's one right under their nose, and that's Derek McInnes, mm. who knows his way around Scottish football knows it back to front knows it inside out and would fancy himself I'm pretty sure in a, in a challenge over Celtic given a bit of time to go and uh, get things um, so um, uh, I don't believe that the time's right to get rid of Fleet come on I would still give him a bit of time given the circumstances um, but if they do make a change then it's about the board and the people at the top of the club learning from the mistakes and they've gone Englishman foreign foreign mm. Look at somebody that's under your nose that's been a, a right good manager for 15 years. More on that after this. This is the Go Radio Football Show. Listen anytime, wherever you get your podcasts. Let's go. Go. Let's go. It's the Go Radio Football Show. Paul Cooney, Mark Weedy and Barry Ferguson. So many Rangers fans on tonight. Not happy and understandably after... The result, but all credit to Kilmarnock. You heard earlier, Derek, a few others are saying, should he be the next Rangers manager? I think a lot of Rangers fans are tempering those, saying, look, it's deeper than this. At, at the board, they've done their best. It's time for a new injection of money coming into the football club because they're up against Celtic, who have a, a balance sheet, Mark, that's uh, really impressive. Yeah, a good, pal- a good balance sheet, but, but good people within yeah. the football club as well, Paul. You know, all over the football club, you know, it's... I mean, ultimately, for a Rangers supporter, it is about the manager and the 11 players. I get that in winning trophies. But right now, where Rangers are, it needs to be a long-term plan. It can't just always be about chasing the next fix. It's got to be a plan put in place, and people need to buy into it. As painful as it may be, the football club and the supporters need to buy into it. Ian's on, a St Mirren fan at the Socials here at Go Football Show, saying, Mark... Your old club, St Mirren, it's far from panic time, but it's been a bad run. Mm. What do you feel for St Mirren? Last year they did so well. Yeah. Is Stephen Robinson going to get back back on track? Yeah, aye, yeah. Well, I mean, Stephen Robinson's a, a quality operator. Uh, he knows his stuff. I liked his interview on Saturday, you know, um, after the game. I and mean, when you watched the game, it wasn't acceptable from St Mirren at all. I mean, Hearts, yeah. were, hearts were scoring. 
uh, with great ease and uh, just and they look like Stephen Robinson team you know St. St. Man lose games but you need to be good to beat them they don't lose easily so that's maybe one of the best things that could happen for them Paul just now as I say we're going into that period for everybody there's no winter break you know it's a solid 10 weeks between now and the sort of Christmas stroke New Year uh, period so uh, I'm sure they'll I'm sure they'll be fine um, but uh, yeah I was surprised at the level of performance from St Mirren on Saturday it wasn't good enough yeah it was a good interview mm-hmm. open and honest mm-hmm. and it's clear that he's not going to accept that mm-hmm. and um, I'm sure this week in training leading up to the game um, against Rangers at Ibrox I think you'll see a different St Mirren team on Sunday attitude wise <clears throat> yeah and yep. just everything because mm-hmm. uh, they, they really pride themselves yeah. on keeping clean sheets and trying to be solid and and compact and that's one thing that he's brought to St Man since he's he's come in and, and also they've got players that can hurt you further up the, the, the pitch but that was very unlike St Man yeah. um, and Saturday and I, I, I really never seen that one coming Huge games coming up at the weekend so Rangers St Mirren Motherwell against Celtic Celtic fan is on Ross on the line Hi Ross, good evening Hi Paul Barry Hope you guys are well How are you yeah, doing? Good, thank Ross. you yeah, no, I'm good. Um, good. I think, for me, from a Celtic point of view, I thought Saturday was a wake-up call that mm. we need to be realistic here about Aberdeen. And mm. I, I generally do think that they will cause us problems in the upcoming game at Hamden. Um, I was a bit frustrated on Saturday with Celtic because they get complacent. We went 2-0 up and we took our foot right off the gas. Mm. And I think we had an opportunity to put the game to bed by half time and we fail to take chances after chances um, and I think on Wednesday coming we can strap ourselves in again for another 3 or 4 or 5 now because that's going to be the outcome on Wednesday night and I just think Rogers needs to have a look at this team and I, I still have concerns about the defence when Carter Vickers isn't there it's clear that we struggle um, but for me, I think you need to give Aberdeen credit on Saturday. They were 2-0 down and they came out and had a go and got a point at it. But I generally do think that there will be a challenge for Celtic this year. Um, and I think we get away with it on, on Saturday with a point and we get away with it yesterday with Rangers dropping points because that could have been back to three points yesterday. After half an hour, Ross, did you think it's the same story as usual? Aberdeen come to town, Celtic two up and you would go on and win three or four? When we went to an up Paul, yeah, I fully really expected Celtic to kick on and, and go for the third and the fourth. But the second half, we just looked as if we were lost and we lost ideas. And when Aberdeen got a goal, it was as if Celtic were kind of spooked that Aberdeen got a goal. And then when it went to each, um, or sorry, when it went to each, then when Aberdeen went 3 2, I don't know, I know Varsity yeah. didn't chop the goal off for the handball, but. At that point when it went to each, you were watching that game thinking Celtic just don't have an idea what they're doing. Like but generally we were scraping the barrel to try and get a win against Aberdeen. And again, I'm no sitting here saying it's Celtic Celtic should expect to, to win every game, but I just think that when you look at the game as a whole on Saturday, you can't fault Aberdeen in the way they came out and had a go at us and and it was the same when Falkirk came and Falkirk had a go at us. And I just think sometimes Celtic fans get complacent at Parkhead and expect mm-hmm. us to go and rattle teams 3 4 5 now, and it's not going to happen. Um, but the, I think the thing that was frustrating most is the fact that we we went, we went 2 0 up, mm-hmm. and after that, we just looked lost. Mm-hmm. Can't take your foot off the gas, Barry. 2 0. I mean, the hardest game Celtic have had. Brendan Rodgers mentioned Falkirk before and I don't think it was a dig at Rangers I think he said Falkirk did have a real goal remember and then Aberdeen did it there 2-0 they have to kill off teams don't they you need more yeah with the amount of opportunities that they yeah. created I think it was 32 attempts on mm. goal you, you need to be scoring more than a, a, a couple of goals but then I think you've you've got to give Aberdeen credit he mm. made the, the double change at, at half time and that certainly sparked Aberdeen and um, I agree I, I, I did watch the game Paul um, and for a, about a 10 or 15 minute period Aberdeen were really on top and I think uh, Ross makes a good point it did look if Celtic get spooked mm-hmm. after that uh, they got that goal back Aberdeen and then obviously Aberdeen got, gained confidence got the second and then it kind of reignited Celtic again they came and, and they went after Aberdeen um, but it just shows you that the game plan that Aberdeen went with certainly in the second half caused Celtic real problems 
And certainly at the back I think they looked a bit edgy mm-hmm. And that obviously comes from missing I think that's one of their most important players If not their most important yeah. player mm-hmm. And that's Carter Vickers He's a massive loss to, to Celtic mm-hmm. he, he gels the defence He's clearly a, a, a real organiser at the back And when you take somebody of that quality mm-hmm. Out of the team You are going to suffer at, at times Mark, Wednesday back, we don't know yet It's unlikely Wednesday <coughs> I wouldn't think yeah. you would put one in Wednesday, Paul No, um, for Park at the weekend Maybe um, But certainly not uh, Wednesday I mean, It just shows you as well, you take Greg Taylor out of the team yeah. Not as good, Vaya is okay But you know, I don't think he's better than Greg Taylor At the moment he's still a kid uh, Trusting Scales, now your first term partnership Scales has been doing very, very well uh, As one of the callers um, said earlier But Trusty's not playing his natural position So you are missing um, and, and Barry's right Ross is right you know, Aberdeen did spook Celtic mm-hmm. even their physicality Aberdeen you know they, they get wired in mm-hmm. and I don't think Celtic liked that you know, I think that Celtic found that uh, tough to cope with the way Aberdeen get right in about them right in about them and that's what you've got to do when you come mm-hmm. to Glasgow you, you, know, you can't stand off and admire so Jimmy Tillene mm-hmm. as much as you know, his teams play football and get it but he made sure his team had that aggression as well so yeah ability be good on the ball be brave on the ball but do you know what let Celtic know that you're down here to give them again. You're not down here to stand and admire them. Do you think other teams will copy what what Aberdeen did and also what Kilmarnock did against Rangers? Maybe have a go. Yeah. But, I know but, it was different. But, but you've got to have good tactical instruction. You've got to believe in your players. You've got to put a plan in place that your players can execute, Paul. Yeah. You can't just copy another manager, but you might no. know of the ability in the team. Yeah. But sure. certainly, you know, if you look at, for example, Kilmarnock, would it de- mm. identify soft centre getting about them? Let's get two big boys up there and get in about uh, proper and suit and see how, how they like it. What did Aberdeen do when they settled into the game to recover the two goals down? They get in about Celtic. You know, they get, they get wired in and they counter-attacked really, really well. I saw Diamondi being dispossessed by Brad Lyons. I know we're back to the Rangers game and I will come back to you, Ross. But he didn't track back. Diamondi didn't chase him then. And I would have thought, just what you said, Barry, you've got to give everything. You're playing for Rangers. Yeah, but I, I, it was a foul, and I, I think yeah, when he sure. he did go down, I, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. I'm thinking right, he, he thinks it's a foul, but it did take a bit of time. Mm-hmm. I mean, I never heard the, the whistle when I was watching it on the TV, and I'm yep. thinking, what's going on here? Yep. Then obviously, uh, Butland makes the save and he, he gives a foul. But listen, teams are going to try and ruffle, yeah. ruffle you up. It's a big part of the game, aggression. And if you don't match your opponent's aggression, then you mm-hmm. could be in trouble. And certainly. Aberdeen done that in the second half to Celtic they didn't enjoy that side of it. and certainly Kilmarnock that was a big part of their game plan um, against Rangers and, and do you know what I have no yeah. problem with that yeah, side yeah. of it Absolutely. I'm all for that mm-hmm. yeah. Ross what's your game plan if you were Brendan Rodgers and do you think he'll change it for Wednesday I think he's got to change it um, I think obviously the fact that we've lost 7-1 to Dortmund again they're playing a quality team but I think this team on Wednesday like they are a good team so they are going to come and have a go at us but for me I think he's got to make some changes what changes he makes I don't know but for me I just think when you look at the last couple of games Celtic have have been suspect at the back um, and for me I, I just think that when, when you notice Carmen and Carter Vickers isn't there it's as if the jigsaw just falls apart um, but We'll see what happens obviously Wednesday night but again I'm just not confident at all and I think obviously I'd just say Saturday was a wake up call for the semi-final coming up because I generally do think mm-hmm. Aberdeen will look at that game and think do you know what Celtic are there for the taking um, and again as I say Casper Schmeichel obviously I'm a big a big fan of him mm-hmm. but I, 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 think, I think the last couple of weeks he's even looked suspect um, and again I don't know if there's a long term plan with him mm-hmm. to stay or if it's just a season but I think for Rogers, for me if, if Casper's Michael wasn't going to be here for the, for, 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 for the remainder of maybe next season is it time to maybe I know we bring this boy in forever but is it time yeah. to even give him mm-hmm. a chance and let's see him then because at the end of the day like the last couple of weeks some of the mistakes that we've made at the back is horrendous and then as I say I, I, I'm, not, I'm not blaming it just on Casper Schmeichel but even some of the goals that we've conceded, and you're like yourself, you're meant to be a, a top goalkeeper. And and again, I'm not I'm not trying to compare him to Joe Hart, but I would probably expect Joe Hart to save save some of the goals. But listen, what I'm, I'm I'm trying to be as positive as I can, Paul. But I'm just yeah. trying to be realistic as well. And yeah. and as I say, 
I just think that on Saturday it was more of a frustration that we went to up and we've just mm. threw it away. Mark? Yeah, I mean, in terms of Casper Smeichel, I don't think it's panic stations like changing the, the, the goal. That strike me as something to do. Panic if, he, if he's thrown him in or his confidence is shot. It doesn't strike me as that being the case. He's conceded a couple of goals over the past few games. You think, yeah, I gave us, you should be saving them. Mm. Sometimes it doesn't all work. And Joe Hart, I remember... When Brendan Rodgers went back to take over at Celtic that summer, I've been Celtic fans with a number of Celtic fans on here wanting Joe Hart out the door. <laughs> you know, he was the good enough. So do, 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 just remember that experience is vital, you know, particularly when you've got a young, or a youngish back four and you've not got your number one set of half playing. So, no, I don't agree um, with uh, leaving Casper Smeichel out uh, just now. I don't agree with that at all. But longer term, yeah. Um, I'll be interested to see how the, the, the boy for Villa's um, shaping up behind the scenes when, if and when he'll be ready to take over from Schmeichel whether it's this summer or they might need to keep Schmeichel on for another year Barry, before Ross goes how do you think Celtic will do on Wednesday night? It's going to be tough I think they need to change it tactically yep. Paul, I, I don't think they can be open and go over to Atalanta and I keep saying it you have to respect the opponent you mm-hmm. come up against and personally I think if Celtic go and play their natural game I think it could be a long night for them. Scoreline? What do you think? Well, it depends on what way they play. I mean, he's not going to change in in terms of the the kind of way he sets up the team, but I think that you've got to have two holding midfielders just parting the bus Mm -hmm. right in front of the two central defenders and don't move out of that area. Um, I don't think you can have one in there just in Callum McGregor. I think you need to have somebody in beside him. Um... And like a kind of square, the two centre backs and two mm-hmm. holding midfielders, and the full backs no as expansive mm-hmm. as as normal. Just sitting a wee bit, because as I said, if you want to try and hit the better teams on the counter attack, certainly Celtic have got pace to burn in the wide areas and Cunning Maeda. Ross, what kind of scoreline do you expect on Wednesday? I I, yeah. I, 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 I generally expect four nil Atalanta. I really? do, and. Again, I hate, I hate saying that because mm-hmm. I try and be as positive as I can yeah. about Celtic and I just I just think that they're coming up against a team that they won the Europa League last year so they're going to be a, yeah. a really, really good mm-hmm. team and I just think, as I say, without Carter Vickers we, we are suspect at the back yeah. and mm-hmm. hopefully I'm wrong hopefully we yeah. can, hopefully I'm sitting here by Wednesday night and we've to one but I just, I just don't see it, Paul We'll call you back if that is the case Thanks, Ross this is the Go Radio Football Show. Listen anytime, wherever you get your podcasts. Let's go! Let's go! Back tomorrow night, and you know who's here? John Hartson and Graham Dorans, Ooh. the former Rangers, currently still at Johnson Borough. Barry, so yeah, Graham still with us. Away. Yeah, yeah. Uh, good to see him. Yep. He's a uh, good quality, good player. Mm-hmm. Graham was. Um, just his Rangers career was blighted with a bit of injury. Yeah. Um, it didn't quite work out for him. But listen, great to see his. He's still kicking a ball about. With us here tomorrow night, we're going to talk about a few of the team. We talked about St Mirren just before, Motherwell losing out to Dundee, but they've been in good form, haven't they? Lynn and Miller came close near the end, Barry, but it was Lyle Cameron who got the goal. Yeah, and I, again, if this young man continues to progress the way he's progressing, I think Dundee are going to struggle. I know Dundee fans will, will not like me saying that, but I think they'll struggle to, to hold on to him because I think the young man's got potential to make the step up. And uh, Motherwell, a reverse for them, Mark. Paul again out for a couple of months, which is bad news. Yeah, yeah, losing the losing the captain who brings that stability at the back can play a number of positions as well. And he's a good organiser, he's a good leader, um, Paul again. So yeah, it's a sore one for Stuart Kettlewell. But look, Motherwell's, Dundee's, Comanlets, all those teams, Paul. That you know they lose games, or you know unexpectedly at home or whatever. You have got to give credit to to Dundee. You know they've bounced back. Shows that Tony Dock and his staff good bit of work with the players, you know, after that disappointment of losing 3 to Kelly uh, before the break. For them to come down to Motherwell, who it's a tough place to come. Any away game's a tough game, let's be honest. So credit to them uh, for that. But Mother- Motherwell will be fine, Paul. They'll be fine and they will make a game of it against Rangers in the semi-final, that's for sure. They sure will. In the Championship at the weekend, well, we know Livy, big win for them, Barry, still undefeated, 2-1 down at Somerset. But a win result. Yeah. Um, and do you know what? I think they're going to be the dark horses. I think so. Livy, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, they're just going about their job quietly David Martindale's um, they're, they're, they're hard to beat mm-hmm. and listen I went down to Somerset Park who are, they're one of the title favourites here United and came away with a brilliant three points uh, Mark a big win for Livy what about Friday night Falkirk <sighs> Oof. 
Three one win at Hamilton. Yeah, it yeah. was a really good win for Falkirk. I think I, I t- to draw a fancy Hamilton to get something being at home, but no Falkirk. Uh, they're, they're going to be there or there, thereabouts um, come the end of the season. John McGlynn's but a good squad, plenty of continuity there, and a great result away from home. Barry, they fought back. I know they were three down. Yeah, but yeah. Falkirk were unplayable yeah. in, the, in the first half. Yeah, yeah they Watch absolute them. battered um, Hamilton. Um, Hamilton came out in the second half. John Rankin, to be fair, made a couple of changes. It made a difference. They got a goal right after um, half time. Um, but Falkirk seen it out and listening to John Rankin after the game, he wasn't too pleased um, with Hamilton's uh, first half performance. Patrick Thistle, a 2 1 win against Airdrie, and it was a big one for them. They needed that. Yeah, yeah, it was. And also lovely to see Alan Hansen back out in yes. public again after his. His illness, yeah. his first uh, public appearance, and um, great to see him get up with Fur Hill, making the journey to where it all uh, started. His fantastic career and a big, big win for Chris Doan. I think Thistle needed yeah. that, Paul. I think they really did, and uh, delighted for them to get that uh, that one. That's a great shout. I saw it on social media. What a reception there for Alan Hansen. And what a player he yeah. was, wasn't he? Yeah. Good to see he's back in good health as well. Is, Obviously, yep. got a, a scare a few months back, so nice to as Mark. Pointed out, mm-hmm. nice to see him back at his, his first. Well, it was his second club, I think. Mm-hmm. He signed from Socky Juniors. There you go. Oh, what? <laughs> you know, you're still a Stirling boy, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. Well done. <laughs> Good point. What happened to him after the Jags? Eh? It was all, what a player, eh? Liverpool legend, Scotland as well. So, right. well done to the Jags winning there. I hope uh, that's right, is it? Qu- Queen's Park. Google that. <laughs> that. <laughs> I'm believing you. <laughs> Wraith Rovers drawing 1 1 with Queen's Park and Dunfermline and Morton 0 0. So, quite a few people on. Rangers fans, actually, the lines have been uh, jammed tonight. They want to hear a bit more from Philippe Clement uh, uh, about the current situation. This was him speaking after the defeat at Rugby Park. I think the angriness has to do with a lot of things. Um, so I will be focused on, on the sportive side to get the best out of the squad, what the squad is now. We spoke about that. Uh, to do that in one transfer window was impossible with the finances this moment. We're going to get work really hard with this squad and there is a lot of potential in this squad. A much more potential than people see maybe for the moment. So a few weeks ago, people spoke also negative about Yefte or after... The, the pre-season and after you get the praise also. So it's about working hard with them and making them better. And for sure, getting to know each other on the field in all different circumstances. It's a different kind of game to play at Kilmarnock today than to play the internationals game the last couple of weeks. I, I, the only thing that's important is about winning our own games. That we need to do and to focus on that. And to get like that uh, a good vibe again. Getting things better, I think a very positive thing last weeks was our domestic uh, clean sheet. We don't get a clean sheet today. So we need to take lessons out of that. Why not? Why we didn't score more goals also? And to become better in that. Barry, what are your thoughts on that? Well, you mentioned um, the potential. You need to start fulfilling that potential, Paul. You're, you're going to now to the third week of October. Um, the, the guys are, have been in through the, the door they train day in day out with each other um, so they need to start getting back to, to winning ways as quickly as possible um, look I, I'm just being brutally honest it, it wasn't good enough it was very very poor um, yesterday and it was a, a big surprise because that was an opportunity missed to claw back a, a, a couple of points Paul um, there's no Simpler way to put it. Mm-hmm. Did he ever go at Jack Butland and was it fair? Well, I kind of look back to where the goal came from. There mm-hmm. was three phases, as I mentioned at the start of the show. Igamani's got to make the defender work to win the header. Mm-hmm. The ball bounces in the middle of the pitch. Whoever, I can't remember who it was, they've got to get closer to David Watson, stop him knocking that ball over. And then Big John, who, listen, I've uh, give gave sorry a lot of credit for um, because I think he's been really good this season he has to make first contact with Marley Watkins not allow it the, the other way and obviously Watkins leans into John puts him off a wee bit and and but I think Jack's got to come out there Mark, do you, what so do you think Mark? I, I'm not I, I mean when, I, when I've watched it um, I'm not I'm no thinking of Jack Butler no, no. Not, never crossed my mind yeah. I'm thinking John Suter 
and obviously Barry's right he's chasing it right back to, to the halfway line to the two points of play before it gets to that but I'm thinking John Souter I'm thinking oh John uh, but I've got then got to give credit to Marley Watkins you know again experienced player powerful great pace and it's not often you see two up top not often you see it but uh, credit to, to, to Derek McInnes What about Leon Balligan he's come out and said he admits Rangers fans deserve to give a furious backlash he doesn't blame them and well, he said they need to be better it's part, it's yeah. part and parcel mm. of playing at a, a massive football club you're expected to win and listen it's never nice don't get me wrong I've been <laughs> receiving then yeah. from a backlash a number of times from the fans but you have to accept it and you have to be honest um, the, the level of performance um, against Kamarno yesterday just wasn't good enough Adapt fast he said and he admits the fans were right it's a bit of groundhog day isn't it Mark as we get closer to the yep. League Cup semi-final and final this is like yeah. last year yeah. because did not Michael Beale take them to the semi-finals or just before it mm-hmm. and then in came Philippe Clement did well and then won it Yeah. so I know things can change if you yeah. win something but, but again you know Philippe Clement learning about yesterday mm-hmm. surely he, he'll know that you know what some of those guys ain't up to us some of those guys aren't they going to get us to where we need to get to potential no potential transfer window but you look at some of those guys Paul and I'll say it again they shouldn't be anywhere near a Rangers jersey and, and I'm and I'm taking the fact that the budget's been cut I'm taking that into account again there's another transfer and again just not enough value for money so if they get worse Chris Boyd and I know you yes. work with Chris and his charity he's yeah. saying I think he said yesterday they've got they've worse regressed. they've regressed oh. There's no doubt about that. They've regressed. Do we need to get some kind of resolve then with Dave King, who's one of the biggest shareholders, and Douglas Park, George Latham? I mean, they all care about Rangers, but these Rangers fans, it can't go on like this, can it? They, they need, they need a, a restructuring of the football yeah. club, Paul. You know, it, it really needs to come. They've got some really good people in there, good operators, people that also understand the football club and the demands, but get good people in there. And what they've got to do, they've got the people that run the football club with John Gillen whoever else is going to come in they need to dig in they cannot um, collapse under pressure for the supporters you know I'll give that, that Fergus McCann's you need yeah. to dig in and believe that what you're putting in place is for the benefit of the long term the football club they need to stop chasing quick fixes Barry's back and certainly you need to see more on the, the, the pitch yeah. as well is he a shouter? In the dressing room, Philippe Clement. I, I don't know, Paul. Don't I've, I've yeah. not been in the dressing room. Sometimes you need that, don't you? Yeah, well, I, I would imagine um, I can only go in past experience experiences. Should I say, if I suffered a, de- a defeat, um, it was a pretty noisy, angry mm. dressing room, and there was a few home truths told. And I don't think there's anything mm. up with that at all. You'll be back with us on Wednesday, Mark. What's Perfect. the yeah, what, no, what's the scoreline? What do you think for Four Celtic? Wednesday night. What, what are you expecting to uh, see? Paul, I just hope it's not a sore one. Um, you know, if Celtic can dig in and, and show something away from home, great. But I do expect Atlanta to win. I expect that we win with a bit to spare. I'm going to go 2-0 Atlanta. Thanks everyone who is on tonight. We're back tomorrow night. Graham Dorns will be here and John Hartson. The news is next and then it's Joe Kilday. This is the Go Radio Football Show. Listen live weeknights from five on Go. Let's go!